Do you have a Furion Vision camera system on your RV or trailer that no longer works with your new truck? Well, I've got the solution for you to solve this problem, and I'll explain it here in this video. Before we get into the weeds, I just want to remind everyone to be careful when working on electrical components, as there is a risk of harming yourself or the equipment you're working on. Always turn power off before working, and double check that your connections are correct before re-energizing any circuits. The solution I'm about to share with you worked for my application, and although it will likely work for yours, the configuration may not be exactly the same. Please make sure you check your trailer's wiring so that incorrect connections are not made, as these could result in damage to the systems. As always, work at your own risk, and this video is not intended to be followed exactly for your application. Now that that's out of the way, let's get into it. So the problem we had was we had bought a fifth wheel and installed a Furion Vision S camera system on the RV for the side and uh, rear view cameras. At the time of the installation we had an older 2011 Chevy Silverado which worked perfectly with the cameras. We then received our 2022 GMC Sierra and the first time we went to pull the trailer with the new truck of course the cameras didn't work. The little blue lights on the cameras almost seemed to be flickering and there was a buzzing noise coming from each of the cameras. As it turns out, the new model year trucks now utilize a PWM signal instead of a constant 12 volt signal for all the peripheral lighting on the truck as well as any lighting on a connected trailer. Now I'm not sure why they've designed these circuits this way, probably trying to save power somehow, but regardless, that was the problem with these cameras not working. For those of you that don't know, a PWM or pulse width modulated signal is an alternating on and off signal as shown on the image here. Depending on the duty cycle or the amount of time the circuit is on divided by the amount of time the circuit is off, you will read a different average voltage output between the hot wire and the ground of the system. So basically what is happening is the truck's electronics are pulsing a 12 volt signal out to all the lighting circuits on the truck and the 7 pin trailer harness at a high enough frequency that humans cannot tell the difference between a light that is being supplied with a constant 12 volt signal or this pulse width modulated signal. When I measured the voltage of my truck's running light circuit, the meter showed about 7 volts, which is about a 60% duty cycle. And that was exactly the issue. The Furion cameras are only made to operate between 8 and 30 volts. Um, 12 volts being, you know, within that range typically. We were only getting 7 volts, so there wasn't a high enough voltage for the cameras to work properly. So the first solution I came up with for this was to utilize a relay to take the signal from the truck's running light circuit switch and use that to turn on a constant 12 volt circuit to the trailer's running lights, which would allow the cameras to run at 12 volts. And this solution did work, but the relay, like the cameras, had this crazy buzzing sound from being constantly turned off and on by the PWM signal of the truck. It was kind of an annoying noise, and it just wasn't the way I wanted to leave the system. So I went back to the drawing board and settled on a more simplistic solution. Instead of utilizing the running light switch within the truck to turn the cameras on, I just mounted a switch at the junction box that's located behind the kingpin. This requires you to flip the switch on or off from outside the truck in order to turn your cameras and trailer running lights on or off. But I figured you're back there already when you're hooking or unhooking, so this didn't really bother me. This also allows us to turn the cameras on while we're parked at the campground and use the Furion camera system as a security system of sorts within the trailer. If you use this trick for this type of application as well, make sure you're plugged in and your house battery charger is on because this will drain your battery. In order to install the switch, we're going to need to open up the junction box behind the king pin of your trailer or wherever that 7-pin connector cord lands before it splits out to the rest of the lights. Once you get that open, we're going to need to identify which wire does what within this box. Now there are some tips for this that we'll go over in a second, but essentially what needs to happen is we're going to need to get a digital multimeter and set it to DC volts, the 20 volt setting, then place the black probe to the chassis of the trailer. We want to make sure we have good contact and not have paint or anything in the way there. And then you're going to take the red probe and moving one group of wires at a time while the black probe is touching the chassis, 
look for a 5 to 13 volt signal on your multimeter. While you're holding the probes to the wires, have another person in the front seat of the truck hit the brakes, turn on the blinkers, and turn on the running lights and look for that 5 to 13 volt signal read across the multimeter as they turn those functions on. There are a couple of groups of wires in this box that will not have any effect when the other person in the truck turns on the lights or hits the brakes. And these are the ground and the 12 volt constant hot. Typically the ground wires will be white and this will be the largest group of wires. You can confirm these are the ground by checking with the multimeter. If you have zero volts between the chassis and the conductors, then these are your ground wires. The 12 volt constant hunt is similar, but instead of getting zero volts, you should get 12 volts between the chassis and this group of wires. These wires are typically red or black within this harness. Lastly, you'll need to find the running light wires. These are typically brown wires, and you can confirm that they are the running lights by checking with the multimeter. When the other person has the light switch in the truck to the off position, there should be zero volts between these conductors and the chassis. When they flip the switch to the on position, there should be five to 13 volts reading out on your meter. Now that you have these wires identified, we're going to disconnect the trailer side running light wires from the seven pin incoming wiring harness running light wire and cap that incoming wiring harness conductor with a wire nut. It will no longer be connected to the trailer's wiring system. Next we are going to take our switch and wire it up. The input or line side of the switch should be connected to the 12 volt constant hot conductor. With a short piece of wire connect that terminal of the switch to the 12 volt constant conductors with a wire nut. I recommend installing a small inline fuse between the trailer's conductors and the switch just as a safety precaution. A 10 amp fuse should do the trick for most new model trailers with LED lighting. Then take the trailer side running light wires and connect them to the output or load side of the switch. Now depending on the type of switch you have, you may or may not need the ground wires to connect to the switch. The switch I used has a little LED light that turns on when the switch is on, and I thought that was kind of a nice feature so you can easily tell when the cameras are on or off from that switch location. If you have a switch like this, you will have a third terminal that will get connected to the ground wires in the junction box. Similarly, attach a small piece of wire to the neutral conductors in that junction box with a wire nut. And that's it from a wiring perspective. As far as mounting goes, you can really put this switch wherever you want it to be, but I just drilled a hole in the junction box cover plate and seated the switch right through the cover plate. And now our cameras work again with our new truck. Now if this seems like too big of a project for you to handle, I believe Furion was working on some kind of adapter kit that would mitigate this issue for the new model trucks. But at the time, they were not out, and in reading the forums, it sounded like they were going to be 60 to $70 a piece, which seemed extreme relative to the solution, which is no more than $10. I hope this video was helpful, and you will be able to get your cameras up and running with your new truck. If it was, please like, comment, and subscribe to this channel. Thanks, everyone.